for oh there's one boy <laughs> Hey everyone, James Nigemeyer here. Thank you for tuning back into my YouTube channel. Today's video is brought to you by BassResource.com. They have a tremendous website and forum for all things bass fishing. So go over there and check out their website. Recently, I was able to hit the water and fish two of my favorite shallow power fishing lures, especially for the fall. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the retrieves, the presentation, and what to look for when fishing these two tremendous fish catching baits. These two baits are not new, but they're great for covering water, eliminating water, and establishing fish holding areas. So with that, let's go to the on the water footage and check it out. So the two lures that I'm gonna talk about is the spinner bait, 3 8 ounce tandem, which is Colorado Willow, and a 1.5 square bill. These are the two guys that I like to go shallow when it comes to power fishing, trying to catch fish from targets and cover just like that. And we will see just how many bites we can get. If nothing else, we'll show you some of the ideas and some of the different things and mindsets that I go, that go into presenting these two baits in the shallow water. Let's get after it. So starting with the trusty spinner bait. This is a KVD spinner bait and it's nothing really fancy it's kind of just like a white spinnerbait but it's got a little bit more of a natural color it's called green gizzard and we're up here in the shallow stuff let me pull up my power poles and we'll get right up there close quarters when it comes to catching them in super shallow water presentation is key so i'm looking at presenting my baits at any kind of cover so like there's a piece of wood and i want to get it nice and close but i also want to get it where I'm presenting it and it's not too it's not really going to scare the fish I want to be able to get it in there without much of a splash and see if I can pull the bait by the fish without alerting them too much or getting them having them turned off just by the presentation of the splash and things like that one of the things that really drawn me to this area is the fact that it's got hard cover and soft cover and the soft cover is uh, obviously that shade the hard cover is all those stumps and lay downs and wood those two in combination really set up nicely for fish to really want to be in here and try to ambush any baits whether it's bluegill or whether it's threadfin or whatever type of prey items they have in this lake so i love the fact that you've got shade and then obviously, I don't know if you can see this, but I've also got the creek channel is swinging right in up against this bank, which is why you can tell just by looking at it that this bank has fallen off into the water. So this creek, natural creek runs right up along this bank. So I've got a lot of different things going on. It's a natural place for me to try to catch a fish with my power baits in shallow water, my power fishing tools in shallow water. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm, I'm trying to run my spinner bait into the targets. I want to try to just cast past it, and then I'm going to run it into the cover and then try to ricochet it off of the wood. And then I'm twitching that, making the blades flutter and dance and the skirt billow. So it's a lot of different things that I'm doing with it. I love the fact that I have a little bit of wind blowing in here. And I like the fact that I've got overhanging branches. It's just a nice environment to try to catch fish in shallow water. Now, if we can just get them to cooperate, I feel like we will. It's really shallow. I mean, I'm not even picking up the bottom here. It's probably less than a foot. GoPro, stop recording. As soon as I... <laughs> As soon as I turn the camera off, of course, one slams it. And there's a nice one, my first spinnerbait fish. <laughs> and he came off the cover. He was at, actually over the channel. And maybe he followed it away from the cover, but um, got him on that old KVD spinnerbait, Strike King KVD spinnerbait. Put him back. All right. Normally, your bites are going to come right by the cover but he maybe followed it out some, or maybe was suspended over the channel. It's hard to say with this water, it's a little bit more stained in here. Can't really 
make for sure where that fish came from, but I'll try to fish around and see if there's another one in there. Up nice and tight, up in that cover. Shallow, shallow. A lot of brush and wood in here. Stuff falling off the bank and it's just settled in the bottom of this little creek here. All these little stick ups right here, natural spot. Several ambush spots going on at different angles and different positions and depth, but also shade lines, crisscrossing. So you've got to try to hit as many as many of them as you can. Nice presentations. I use that roll cast so that I can get it to lay in there. If you do an overhand cast, it has a tendency to have more elevation and then obviously it comes down with more force and then creating more of a splash and kind of alerting fish to your presentation and it coming in not as natural. Some bait fish in here. A lot of times I like a little trailer on the back of my spinner bait, like a grub or twin tail trailer or a, a little swim bait, something like that. But sometimes just straight without a trailer can work too, just like it is right now. Tell you, whenever you're fishing the spinner bait in shallow water like this, or any kind of power fishing, like the spinner bait or, or bladed jig or top waters, that shade in conjunction with all this cover is really a big plus. There's one. Got it right as it hit the water. Yeah, spinnerbait bass. You know, over the years, I think the, the spinnerbait's kind of fallen out of favor with a lot of fishermen, but it's still as effective as it always was. It's just, it, conditions do matter. Stained water, low light conditions, shade lines, and wind. They, they all help the spinnerbait bite. But the stained water will enable you to fish that spinnerbait longer. That's awesome. All right. So something cool there is, I mean, that, was, that fish was in real shallow water. It was up in that scattered br brush right there, which obviously there's a beaver dam right there. When you're in that real shallow water with your power fishing baits, like your spinnerbaits and your crankbaits and bladed jigs and stuff like that, a lot of times that bite's going to come as soon as it hits the water because that fish is so shallow he actually sees it traveling through the air before it hits and then when it hits the water he's ready to intercept it which is a lot of fun you'll get some bites like that in real shallow water like that trying to get my presentation near the cover and then run it into the cover and let it fall, let it ricochet, different things like that. You'll get some fish to react to it. It's key to try to get fish to react on a bait is just moving that bait around those targets, hitting them from multiple angles, nice quiet presentation, stealthy approach, and you can get some bites in really shallow water like I'm in right now. Well, I got a couple bites on the spinnerbait, but something about the spinnerbait isn't quite getting the fish to react like I think they should. So I feel like we should have had more bites on the spinnerbait. So maybe it's time for the old square bill. This is the Strike King 1.5 square bill. And with this, we can get it a little deeper. And sometimes just a little bit different action is what they want. Again, same principle, throwing it right up against the cover. Oh, there's one. Golly. That boy <laughs> i'll tell you when you have the right bait those fish will tell you immediately get a bite on the first cast with the 1.5 and look at how he's got it i mean guzzled it he has got it it's the perfect way to know that you've got the right bait time for the pliers got it down in the crushers the hemostats They're in here. All right. So clearly, 
that square bill was more along the lines of what they wanted on that lay down right there. Hope you can see it. I actually see some little bait fish or something around there. Cause I just hit the spinner bait down the sides of that lay down and over it and uh, not necessarily down the sides, but over it. And it might be just an angle thing, but that's first cast with the square bill and boom, right on the end of it down here. Of course, this is gonna run a little bit deeper than a spinner bait, but I am seeing a lot of bait fish down there. That's always a good sign. When you pick up another bait and you get a bite real quick, boom, obviously that's the positive affirmation you're looking for. And sometimes they just want one over the other on a given day. So you gotta keep an open mind, but that's what makes this combination so powerful. It's the spinner bait, crank bait combo because on a given day, they'll want one over the other and you wanna keep your mind open and available to take advantage of it when they do. Just, I mean, you gotta be bold with it though. You can't be afraid of getting hung up with it, running it into it. I'm actually trying to run it into stuff. Now, and that's the thing too, is you're gonna get hung up. So be prepared for that. You can try to slingshot it back out sometimes that'll get it and then sometimes it won't so you just got to go over there take the troll motor over to it nice and gentle try not to damage the boat or anything else one of the best things is just running the rod tip down to it and jiggling it a little bit and you just get it right back out just like that there's definitely, looks like some baby bluegill, maybe some shad. And obviously there's some fish in this little creek channel and in this little section of it as well. A couple keys to catching them on a spinnerbait and a square bill in shallow water is generally people don't want to throw where they feel like they're gonna get hung up. And that's where the fish are. They wanna throw their worms and their jigs over there because they feel like they're gonna get those back, but if you can throw your square bill or your spinner bait in a place where you don't think many people have thrown a crankbait or spinner bait because they think they're going to lose it it's a more expensive uh, bait than a a worm or a jig and the worm or a jig has a tendency to come back well you throw that square bill in there or that spinner bait and you can catch some fish that otherwise wouldn't have bit other baits just throwing it up there where it's just hairy, multiple casts, different angles, change and retrieve speeds, pausing it, cranking it, trying different stuff. Switch back over to the spinner bait and got a little guy. Just the one, two punch for shallow power fishing. There's one. A spinner bait again. Yeah, look at that one. <laughs> That's a prettier one. Look how thick that one is. Kind of came out to the edge of this little little creek here. Pretty. Look at how he's got that orange or goldish film or goldish color, not film, but color to it. Gosh, just so pretty. Nice. Love catching them on that spinner bait. And there's just times when they want one over the other. I'm kind of fishing it just not out of sight, just barely out of sight. That kind of twilight area where not quite out of sight, but not quite, just barely visible. I can see the bait blades flashing every now and again. Marking some bait down here. Oh, there's another one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're in here. Yeah, they're in here. On the spinner bait. Nice. Gosh, I love catching them on that spinner bait. They will just come for that bad boy. Nice. One of the things about that spinner bait is you've you gotta kinda figure out what level they want it at. Do they want it up high in the water column? Do they want it down low? Where do they want it? And what retrieves? Sometimes they want a slow roll, not much action, just blades turning, bouncing along the bottom, different things like that. 
And then other times they want it kind of aggressive and the blades flashing and clanking together and drawing reaction to them and drawing attention to them. So you gotta have to figure that out. That's, you gotta play with that retrieve. So that's my one-two punch for shallow power fishing. Whenever I need to cover water in order to find fish, eliminate unproductive water and establish areas where fish are holding, I'm gonna rely on a 1.5 square bill and a spinner bait. They're great at drawing reaction strikes, triggering fish to bite when they're holding in and around shallow targets, especially in stained water and in the fall. Now remember, these two baits are great at being fished in and around areas where you would probably throw a worm or a jig, a bait that is more weedless, a bait that won't get hung up as much. Well, these baits, you can get them in there and actually run them into those cover types. Again, that square bill, was gonna ricochet off because of that square deflecting bill. And then the spinner bait, of course, because of the uh, wire frame like that, it acts kind of like a weed guard, but also the head will actually move in and around and ricochet off targets as well. The key to remember is those roll casts. You can lay the bait nice and easy in the water with not a lot of splash, but with some practice, you can actually make pinpoint casts with these shorter rods, which enable you to really present the bait right where you want it to go. Don't forget to head over to BassResource.com, the tremendous website and forum for all things bass fishing. Thanks guys for watching this video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and of course, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And until next time, thanks for watching and good fishing.